I was cruising on YouTube when I heard the Young Turk and that Roland Martin, a black man, commenting about Ben Carson's comment about a person's mindset. I didn't hear Ben say to the poor poverty was their fault. What Ben Carson said was, I think poverty to a large extent is also a state of mind. He would only say you have to instill in that child the mindset of a winner if they are likely to be a winner. He used the word likely to be a winner. Ben says to a large extent, Ben says to a large extent, indicating that's not the only reason, but largely. He also said is also <laughs> indicates other factors, but a good state of mind has a better chance to be innovative and to move ahead in life. A state of mind can be what that individual determines what prosperity is to them. A simple life with someone you love can be great wealth to some people. In another video, I heard Ben Carson say he started reading Proverbs in the Bible to help with this anger. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, I'm sure he ran into. So, for as, a, as he thinketh in his heart, Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, you think with your mind. Heart is the innermost part of your mind where your believing is where you take action on your thoughts, the action center of the will, where you take actions on your thoughts. I heard the Young Turks mention a movie, Trading Places, to prove their point that circumstances plays a role. Okay. It still takes a mindset to begin the process. Speaking of movies, how about that movie, Get Rich or Die Trying, you know, 50 Cent. But I'm not for by any means necessary, however. Still, in a large, in large, it starts with the mindset. How are young minds mindset shaped today? How are young minds mindset shaped today? The picture of our culture. Hmm. What does it say? What does our culture teach our kids, especially in the black community? Maybe what is so offensive using the words mindset indicates freedom of will or choice. <laughs> so people declare, so people that declare they are born a certain way, no matter the mindset. So therefore they don't like that term. <laughs> Any coach understands this stuff and athletes train to build a winning mindset. We should embrace Ben Carson's comment as a start. Tell our kids how powerful their brains are. And when you think about it, you think about the brain that God has given you. We were made in his image and he's no dummy. You know, your brain has billions and billions of neurons, hundreds of billions of interconnections. It can process more than two million bits of information in one second. It doesn't forget anything you've ever seen or anything you've ever heard, which is why it's important to make sure you don't put the wrong things in there because they always will impact upon you subconsciously and consciously. But to give you some idea of how complex your brain is, how many of you remember your birthday? Let me just see your hand. I think it's unanimous. Now, what did your brain have to do for you to respond to that question almost instantly? Well, first of all, the sound waves had to leave my lips, travel through the air, enter your external auditory meatus, travel down to the tympanic membrane, set up a vibratory force, which travel across the ossicles of the middle ear to the oval and round window, set up a vibratory force in the end of the lymph, we mechanically distorted the microcilia, converting mechanical energy to electrical energy, which travel across the cochlear nerve to the cochlear nucleus at the pontomedullary junction, from there to the superior olivary nucleus, ascending bilaterally up the brainstem to the lateral meniscus to the inferior colliculus and the mini geniculate nuclei, across the thalamic radiation to the posterior temporal lobes to begin the auditory processing, but that to the frontal lobes, coming down the track to Victor Jury, retrieving the memory from the immediate hippocampal structure to the mammary bodies, back to the frontal lobes to start the motor response at the bed cell level, coming down the cortical spinal tract, across the internal capsule, into the cerebral peduncle, descending down to the cervical medullary decussation, so you could raise your hand. Now, that... You know, working at Walmart or McDonald's is gaining experience. 
learning how to work and budget your money, a mindset to better things. It opens the doors for better opportunities. You know, because people want a dog, people working at Walmart or say they're poor. They could be great stepping stones. Companies are always looking for good workers they can trust. I know a young man and grew up with, and I heard of many others, who started out as a cook at McDonald's with just a high school education. Now, 30 something years later, and now owns three franchises, McDonald's franchises. What do you think his income is? It started with the mindset to do one's best and learn to work. Titus chapter one, verse 15. It says unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Even their mind and consciousness, even their mind and consciousness is defiled. <laughs> Let's look at that verse again. This is from the Bible. Believe what you want. Unto the pure, that means those that are pure, they understand the difference between truth and error. It's not saying that they say everything is pure. What it means, if you're pure, you understand the difference between that which is pure and that which is not. You understand the difference between good and evil. But unto them that are defiled and believing and unbelieving is nothing pure, nothing pure. In other words, there's no such thing as pure. There's no such thing as truth. There's no such thing as God's accurate word. But even their mind and consciousness is defiled. That's what the Bible says about them. A certain disciple.